بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم من بعد أي رحمة في الله. Continue our study of our brief, concise explanation or commentary on the Nawaqid al Islam by Dr. Saleh Asadeh Rahmatullahi Alayh. We reach the fifth out of the ten Nawaqid al Islam, the fifth Nawaqid, where Imam Muhammad al Wahhab Rahimahullah Ta'ala said, Al Khamis men abga the shayim mimma jaabihi rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wulu amala bihi kafra. Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala said, Whoever detests something that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with, then this person has disbelieved. So, Dr. Saleh Saleh he said, hating any command or anything of the Prophet message, despite practicing it, is disbelief. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <coughs> that is because they hate that which Allah has sent down, so he has made their deeds fruitless. And this ayat here shows the seriousness of the person who detests the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the punishment, the severe punishment and that it's disbelief and likewise the importance of knowledge in fact and this is due to the fact that if you don't have adequate knowledge or you don't know knowledge about issues in your religion perhaps you may detest something which is from the religion and it's possible that you might fall into disbelief and one thing which we have to be careful of is for example some different ways in which people can fall into this one of the ways is some uh, women they detest the hijab they hate hijab they say, uh, it's very heavy. It's too hot outside. I can't breathe. It's heavy on my head. It gives me headaches. Or I just don't like the way it looks or whatever. Or my husband hates it. This is also something I've seen where women have asked the ulama or students of knowledge as well about this issue. Where certain women, their men hate the hijab and say, why are you wearing that big hijab? Why don't you wear something that looks normal or something that looks in a, a presentable way, you know, like such and such or such and such. So in fact, he detests the hijab, the legislated dress of the Muslim woman. What Allah and His Messenger وسلم, have commanded. So this right here is a very dangerous thing and can make a person leave the fold of Islam if he detests the hijab in and of itself. And likewise, maybe someone hates the beard. Some women, they hate the beard. They say, it just doesn't look beautiful. We want a man to look baby face. We want a man to look like baby face. We want a man to look like uh, Denzel Washington. We want a man to look like Tom Cruise or whoever. And even some of them grow beards for their roles in their films and so forth. However, the point being, is that there are Muslim women who detest the beard. Not just that they say, well, you know, honey, I, I kind of think you look better with it shaved or something, but some of them, they actually detest the beard. And they detest when they see someone from Ahl Sunnah with a big beard. They detest it. And it goes to the next Naqad, Min Nawaq al Islam, which is making fun. So then they go to even making fun of the people with big beards or the, the people with the short pants or the short thobes or the woman with the big hijab and we'll talk about this a little bit more in detail when we get to the next naqid of Islam so this is very important to be careful to not detest the signs of the sharia and likewise the punishments of the sharia the, and the boundaries of the sharia you should not detest them because they are legislated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's very serious if you hate those things 
Maybe your heart is weak and you're, you, it, it's hard for you to a degree to accept things. This is from weak men. But if you actually dislike and hate things of the Sharia, then this is where you've, you've entered a very dangerous and you, you, you perhaps have entered and, and become uh, and fallen into disbelief. So it's very important to have knowledge of these nawaqat al-Islam, these things that take you out of the fold of Islam. And especially if it's something that's known uh, by necessity amongst the Muslims, you know. So it's a difference if a new Muslim did say, I don't like the beard, I don't, I don't want to grow the beard. You know, a Muslim man, he says, I'm not going to grow that beard. You know, he finds out it's a sunnah, but he doesn't really know. He finds out it's, it's, it's from Islam, but he, he's not really aware of that hukum. But someone who's aware, then this is uh, absolutely, uh, this is disbelief. But perhaps, in Allah knows best, the new Muslim, who's unaware of this hukum, no, unaware of these things, would have other bijah. They would have the uh, excuse of ignorance. So, the point being is to be cautious. Another way in which people sometimes fall into the, this dangerous sin <coughs> uh, is that sometimes people they actually do the action but they hate it some people they really hate to pray but they pray so no doubt the shaitan's going to whisper to you ah, you know if only my life I could be sleeping in you know isn't there ever a break from fajr isn't there ever a break a, a holiday from praying five times a day, I'm on my vacation now. I, I do that during the school year, I do that during my work days, or whatever. D can I have a break? Okay, this is a very dangerous whispering from the shaitan. So you cut that whisper off. If it, if it comes to you in your heart, that, it could either be waswas, waswas from the shaitan, or hadith and nafs. And in those cases, you will not be held accountable for that. Cut it off though, cut it out. But if you utter it, or you implement it, or you speak it to other people that, hey, I, I don't like, uh, you know, I feel I need a break from Salat or something like this. But you don't try to fight it, because the shaitan's going to whisper to you. Your nafs are going to whisper to you. You know, hadith and nafs. So you have to be very cautious. And the case being, some people, they actually pray, but they hate the prayer. They actually detest it. And this is different than the one who is perhaps weak in Iman and they just want to finish the Salat early. This is weak. This is, uh, you know, something with the moon. However, as long as they do not actually hate the prayer, maybe they have things to do, maybe they, you know, the shaitan is whispering to them and whatever, they want to get home, they want to jump back in the bed, whatever. Uh, you know, the point isn't that they fight that. Jihad and nafs. But the one who does it, who just prays to please the people, or they, they actually hate that act of worship, or the woman she hates to cover, but she covers, she wears niqab and everything. This is a very dangerous thing, and we've seen many people fall into both of these things, where after a while, they finally break, and finally they're their desires will probably overcome them because they actually hated that Amr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She wore the hijab because of her family, she wore the hijab because of her husband, then they divorced, she wore the hijab for whatever, and then when that term ends or whatever, she actually hated it all along and now she's free to just come out of the hijab. Hey, I'm free. And she hated it. This is disbelief because this is something known uh, in the religion by necessity that the woman, the Muslim woman covers. Even non-Muslims know that Muslim women cover. And another way in which this happens, you know, it could be the same thing with the beard and so forth. So we have to be careful. And this is uh, what Dr. Saleh was uh, basically saying and alluding to when he said, hating any command or anything of the Prophet Wasallam's message, despite practicing it, is kufr, meaning that the person actually practice, practices, but they just hate it. They hate this thing, or they don't believe in it. This is disbelief. Sheikh Salim bin Fazan has some very nice uh, speech or uh, commentaries about this as well in his 
uh, explanation of this uh, book, and we went over this in uh, in our study, in, in the one that I put together, my treatise, and you can find it on YouTube, the more in-depth uh, version, uh, in-depth explanation, because I took different explanations from different ulama, like Sheikh uh, Imam uh, Fouzan, Sheikh Abdelaziz Arais, Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, Sheikh uh, Abdelazak Al-Badr, and, and many other ulama from Ahl Sunnah, I used their, uh, I, I took benefits from, from many of their explanations of the book and compiled it. So it's a bit more in depth. The next, the sixth, Naqid uh, Nawaqid al Islam, Asadis, Men Estahza Bishayin. من دين رسولي صلى الله عليه وسلم أو ثواب الله أو عقابه كفر ودليل قوله تعالى كل بالله وعياته ورسوله كنتم تستحزيون لا تعتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم The sixth ناقد من الوقت الإسلام and I feel like we're not giving this treatise its hak but you can go back for the more in-depth explanation and I'm sure there's also many on the internet from the students of knowledge, but we're just being as brief so someone can cook in the kitchen and listen. Uh, you can listen before you go to school, after school, take 10 minutes, listen to a lecture, listen to a lesson. And these are books. Again, we want to emphasize going over books about the Sunnah instead of just listening to a lecture that makes you feel good, which is good. And you need that. We need that boost of Iman, the khutbahs and the lectures. But also, the, the strongest aspect of Tarbiyah is 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 talib al -ilm, is actually studying books of the salaf and you know studying the tafsir of the quran studying the quran studying tafsir of the quran you know and 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 so forth these are the things that are going to build you not just build your iman but they're going to build you as a muslim and a believer and so uh he uh imam muhammad ibn Wahab said whoever makes fun of something from the religion of the prophet sallallahu or the reward of Allah, or his punishment, has disbelieved. Very important, very serious. And I think we'll just translate the, the basics, and then we'll go into depth in another sitting, because it's very important. And then he said, the evidence is the statement of Allah, the Almighty. Uh, the evidence for this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu to say to the people, say, is it Allah and his signs and his messenger that you were making fun of or you were ridiculing? You are not excused and you have disbelieved after you had iman, after you had believed, after you had believed. And this is so serious and the, the, the this is some uh, people they were with the Prophet وسلم, they came, to, they were making fun of they were sitting in a gathering you know and they had traveled and they would tell tales and they were making fun of the Sahaba and then one of the Sahaba came to the Prophet وسلم, and told him and one of the men one of the men was grabbing onto the camel of the Prophet وسلم, uh, saying you know, the Prophet Sallallahu read this ayah. Said, you have disbelieved after you had a man. And the man kept asking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi He felt so much shame and cried, holding on to the cam camel, saying, we were only joking, Ya Rasulullah. We were only telling, telling tales that the people tell when they travel. You know, we're just, you know, making tales to pass the time because this was the custom of the Arabs, but it's really the custom of many people that you do things, especially if you travel in groups, you tell stories or you, if you're camping, you know, people camp uh, and they, they tell stories or they make jokes or whatever to pass the time. But these people were actually ridiculing uh, the, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and speaking about the Sahaba and, and so forth and about the deen. And so the Prophet, uh, Allah said, that you have disbelieved after you had Iman. So it shows us the seriousness and the danger.
with regards to joking about the dean. And we'll pick up on this and go a little bit more into detail. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan.